up to now, we assume many um, strong things. First, we assume uh, finite hypothesis class, and also we assume there exists just h star in your hypothesis class, such that the test error of your h star is equal to zero. From there, we uh, naturally have this property, and this property make uh, there exists at least one hypothesis in your hypothesis class that makes zero training error. And so your empirical risk minimization output LS also have to satisfy uh, satisfy zero training error. And using this property, we also analyze some sampling complexity for epsilon delta pack learning. Uh, using uh, some concentration inequality, not not very concentration inequality, but using a union bound. Okay. Okay. It was it was um, simple as it was straightforward. Now let's let's remove this assumption. Okay. When there is um. No such H star that making zero, that makes zero training, uh, zero test error. Uh, now we cannot say there exists at least one hypothesis that makes zero training error. Okay. And also, more importantly, in some cases we also have some observation noise. Even if H star uh, in your hypothesis, uh, satisfy zero test test error because of the observation noise. There always some mistake in your training process. Okay, there always some error. Right? It it is also possible. So we have to redefine some true error as follows. So now, y does not come from the ground truth f because of some uh, observation noise. Now we have to define some joint distribution of x and y as follow. So here, not only x but also y randomly sampled by some distribution d, and we are interested in the mismatch between our hypothesis output. And um, y, the sampled variable y. So in the case, maybe there is no hypothesis that make zero test error, and for sure, right? So we have to uh, define pack learning for this more general case, which is called agnostic pack learning. So what is agnostic pack learnability? For every epsilon delta, like before. In between zero and one, for every distribution d over x and y, joint space, uh, there exists some sampling row bounds, which of course depend on epsilon delta, such that when the number of samples bigger than or equal to the sampling row bound, the IID examples generated by distribution d, uh, the algorithm return h. The ERM rule return H satisfy the test error less than or equal to the best hypothesis plus epsilon. Okay? Since we don't know the exact distribution D, but we only have um, training data samples, we cannot find the best hypothesis with respect to the test error. We only have the best hypothesis with respect to your training error, not test error. So here we are interested in the difference between the best hypothesis
persons the test zero of your empirical so HS empirical risk minimizer that minimize your training error sample error okay so we want to make this um, in this this is HS let's say this is HS the test error of empirical risk minimizer we want to make this one less than or equal to the true optimal test error plus epsilon so we again allow epsilon amount of um, more error due to the uh, random sample training data point with probability 1 minus delta with high probability so basically um, agnostic pack runnability almost the same with the pack runnability we already defined for uh, finite case and the perfect case okay okay so for this we first um, study uniform convergence theorem so this is a key component to guarantee agnostic pack runnability so what is uniform convergence the uniform convergence is this so let hypothesis class h and let epsilon and delta be uh, greater than zero in between zero and one as before if a training set s of size this so now this is sample complexity is drawn from distribution d then with probability greater than one minus delta every hypothesis h satisfy this okay every satis hypothesis satisfy the training error minus test error the absolute value is less than or equal to epsilon so if we have at least this amount of samples we can say that for every single hypothesis in your hypothesis class our training error is very good estimator of test error so if we have a uniform convergence result from this we can naturally uh, straightforwardly make a agnostic pack learning property right if we have epsilon over 2 uniform convergence property which can make epsilon delta so we, if we have epsilon uniform convergence with probability 1 minus delta then we can make epsilon delta agnostic background okay so from this property when you replace epsilon by epsilon over 2 this is essentially the sampling complexity for the agnostic pack line okay how to show this uh, uniform convergence property let s be the training set and consider a given hypothesis h and let p is the test error of the given hypothesis h okay so in this proof i will show the training error and test error difference for a single given hypothesis and then i will apply uniform bound union bound okay to make uh, uh, the theorem so to this aim let's first define the indicator random variable so let x day the capital x day be the indicator random variable so which indicate whether h x j is equal to y j or not so if x j the capital x j equal to 1 
then which means your hypothesis H can correctly classify the data point. Uh, since we are considering IID sampling process, the xj random variable is very new random variable, and all x1 through xn are IID very new random variable with parameter p. So with probability p, we have positive value 1, and with probability 1 minus p, we have zero value. Okay, so since each xj is IID sample from the data generation D. Okay, so therefore, the sample error LSH is equal to uh, 1 over n summation over xj, and xj is Bernoulli random variable with parameter p. So this sum of Bernoulli random variable is binomial distribution with n samples with parameter p. Okay. So from Hefting's inequality, the Hefting's inequality can give you very tight concentration inequality for sum of independent bounded random variables. So this is exactly the case. The probability of LSH minus LDH strictly bigger than epsilon is equal to probability 1, minus 1 over n times summation of xij, the Bernoulli random variable with parameter p minus expectation p, which is strictly greater than epsilon. And from the Hefting's inequality, we have this because each xj is bounded, low bounded by 0 and upper bounded by 1, and the IID, we have this concentration inequality. Of course, if you apply chain of Hefting's inequality, you can achieve better, tighter bound. Okay, but to show this, uh, let, let's just use Hefting's inequality. And turn off Hefting's version. Let's uh, make a new result using turn off Hefting's inequality by homework. Okay, this is homework. So therefore, we can conclude this theorem by the union bound. So by union bound, uh, we can simply need to multiply the cardinality of hypothesis. The probability there exists H that is fine uh, Ls H minus L D H strictly bigger than epsilon is less than or equal to the cardinality of h times 2 times exponential minus 2n epsilon square. This comes from the union bound. And to conclude this theorem, we need to find the condition of n that satisfies this. Okay, so take the log. We have log h cardinality plus log 2 minus 2n epsilon square less than or equal to log delta. It is okay to take log both sides because log is strictly increasing function. So move this one to here, this one to here. We finally have n is greater than or equal to log cardinality of h plus log 2 minus log delta over 2 times epsilon square.
Let's see. That's that's the conclusion of the proof.